Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle and a brief screencast on the conversion factor and the role that it plays in a treasury bond futures contract. In the US, treasury bond futures contract trade on the Chicago Board of Trade where one contract is for delivery of 100,000 face value of the bond. In the futures contract, the short position here, that's this counterparty, has the choice to select which government bond is delivered as part of the contract. That's the interesting and oftentimes confusing feature of the Treasury Bond Futures contract. The fact that this short can oftentimes choose among 20 or more different government bonds for delivery. And those bonds will have different maturities and different coupons. For example, this short could deliver a 15.7 year bond with a 9% coupon or an 18 year bond with a 5% coupon. How is it possible the short can deliver these different bonds with different maturities and coupons? It's possible by way of the conversion factor. So the long pays the short the quoted price on the bond, and those will be different, but multiplied by the conversion factor, and the conversion factor is designed to put these bonds on a level playing field. Why go to this trouble? Well, this is by design by the U.S. Treasury and the Federal Reserve. They do not want to insist that the short deliver a specific government bond. If the short needed to deliver a specific bond, there could be a run on the ish, on that single issue. Liquidity problems would probably ensue. And so the idea is, let's make this short able to choose among many different government bonds. And furthermore, by multiplying the quoted price by the conversion factor, let's make the short almost indifferent to which bond to deliver. So that's the purpose of the conversion factor. If I move up the spreadsheet and we take a look here at the spreadsheet that I've uploaded to the member page for my FRM candidate customers, this is a spreadsheet that replicates the conversion factor math used by the Chicago Board of Trade. And I won't go into all the details here, I'll just note that the spreadsheet takes a, just a few assumptions and here's the key assumption and that's a 6% rate or yield. The Chicago Board of Trade standardizes the eligible bonds by assuming they all have a yield of 6%. So for example, I have here one row uh, per each eligible bond for delivery. These are actual bonds. If the delivery is going to be in September 2008, then consider this first row is an eligible bond with a coupon of 3.5% maturing on February 15th of the year 2028. Here's the conversion factor. This, I'll come back to that. This bond that's eligible for delivery has an actual time to maturity of 19 years and five months. The first step in computing the conversion factor is to round the time to maturity down to the nearest three month interval. So in this case, 19 years and five months gets rounded down to 19 years and three months. Here this bond, 16 years and five months, gets rounded down to 16 years and three months. Here's a bond that's 16 years and two months that gets rounded down evenly to 16 years. If the rounding down happens to round down to either an even a zero month, in this case 16 years and zero months, or to a six month interval, in this case 16 years and six months, then the conversion factor is straightforward. If I go over here, then all the spreadsheet does is use the bond calculation to compute the price of the bond, a present value calculation and the key assumption here is right here at the uh, interest rate or yield, which is the 6%. And so that 6% as the assumption, that reflects the essential idea of the conversion factor. And here it is. We have different bonds with different coupons and maturities. Those are all eligible for delivery. However, they are priced or valued 
as if the yields are 6% for all of them. So it doesn't matter which coupon, uh, which coupon and maturity the bond actually has. All of these are based on a 6% yield. That's a standardizing assumption for all the bonds for delivery. So you can see that price here gives rise to this conversion factor of 0.82. If the bond is, does not round down to an even uh, zero or six month interval, then the rule is a little more complicated and that math's off to the right and I won't show you now. But I will just make the point that all of these bonds have coupons of less than 6%, so their conversion factors are less than one. If I change, for example, this bond and give it a 6% coupon, you'll notice it will then produce a conversion factor of 1.0. We won't really need to make any adjustment because the bond's coupon of 6% will match the standardizing assumption of a 6% yield. If the coupon is higher than 6%, then the conversion factor will be greater than 1. So that's a summary of the conversion factor and the role that it plays in the Treasury Bond Futures contract. If you're a FRM candidate, you can, uh, you, you can look at and download the spreadsheet on the member page. This is David Harper, The Bonic Turtle. Thank you.